Well, welcome. Good to have you here. I know our class is going to be a little bit smaller. I've had some people text say they're, they're further out people that say it's solid ice out in certain parts. So, uh, but we're going to have a good time together. So, out there, solar and all you out there in whatever land, hello. Hope you're enjoying the class uh, and the warmth of your homes. But uh, we're going to be encouraged and delight today as we have an opportunity to look at um, the land of the Bible again. And just to kind of give you a, what are we doing here uh, in this class. And for the last little bit, I've been trying to get, reformat your hard drive, okay? Reformat the way you, what you think of, what comes to your mind when you think of the lands of the Bible. And so we've just gone from um, uh, west to east and through the five or six different regions of the land of Israel and, and from north to south on each of those regions to help you to understand what are those places like. And so we're almost at the very end of that. I think well, hopefully we'll finish that today. We're going to finish up the Transjordan Plateau. Uh, we're going to, we will look at the land of Moab. Well, we finished that last week. We're going to look at Edom, look even down south, and even there's some uh, relevance to even contemporary news on some of that. Um, so we'll look at a little bit of that today, and I uh, trust will be encouraged. And then we're going to look at, uh, if we have time, we'll look at the Old Testament regions, New Testament region. I want you to be able to think of the Old Testament. You'll think of uh, Southern Kingdom, the land of Judah. Where were they? Northern Kingdom, land of Israel. Where were they? Uh, and then when we get to New Testament, I want you to be able to think of uh, the basic regions of the New Testament, which are um, uh, Judea, and then Samaria, and then Galilee. And we'll just talk about those just briefly. And then if we have time, we'll get to the uh, routes. What are, how do people travel through the land of uh, Israel? Look at the main routes, because there's really main routes, and it's very defined. Even today, if you want to know where the old routes were, just look where the freeways are today in Israel. Uh, or highways, I guess you'd call them. Not quite what we think of freeways. Uh, well, they have some, yeah. So we're going to look at that. How did how how did they channel through that? And we'll talk about how the land of Israel was really a funnel. That anyone, that any world power that was wanting to conquer anything, they they had to go through the land of Egypt. It was a land bridge between three continents. And so we'll we'll talk about that um, as well. And just a reminder, those of you that are planning on going to the Israel trip in 2026 of June, uh, we do have a meeting today, um, about 12, 15 or so, right after the service. It's downstairs uh, in the uh, small uh, classroom. Even if you say, I hadn't thought about that, you would come as well. Even if you, you aren't you aren't sure and you'd like to find more, out more information you hadn't signed up yet, we'll just come on down. We'd love to have you um, be a part of that as well. Well, let me open a word of prayer, and we'll get started. Father, thank you so much. You're so good to us. Uh, and most of all, uh, everything, uh, all the goodness, blessings of our lives centers on Christ and what he has done on our behalf as you sent him to vicariously die in our place. And so I pray um, that we would live in light of that, those glorious realities. As we look at uh, your the, the land of the Bible, uh, help, it, help us to understand more what the, the land was like so that we can understand our scriptures better, so that we can apply them more effectively to our, our lives. We pray this just wouldn't be words on a page or maps on a page, but that they would, these would truly help us to understand with vividness um, what uh, the Bible was like and what the land was like so that we can understand and apply it to our lives. Thank you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, so just to remind you, I, I, know, I, I know this is repetition, but I, I, I'm going to keep repeating the things that are most obvious, okay? Uh, we, we're talking about the basic areas. Uh, let me get my little pointer here. Okay. Uh, basic areas we're talking about, we talked about the coastal plain, which is that, you know, 7 to 10 mile area right uh, on the coast between the Mediterranean. And then we have the lowlands. The, the other name for the lowlands is the Shephala. Sometimes you'll hear that, uh, which literally means in Hebrew, lowlands. That's what it means. Uh, this land here, lots of biblical stories happen here. And then in the hill country, sometimes called the Judean hill country, because there's also Galilean hill country up in here. But much of biblical um, stories, particularly Christ, I mean, life, the New Testament happens in the Judean. Uh, the Judean hill, hill lands, uh, hill country here. We talked about the Jordan Rift from Mount Hermon all the way down to the Hula Valley, to the uh, Sea of Galilee, uh, to the Jordan River, and then uh, down to the Dead Sea. Uh, we talked about that. And so now we're finishing up. We're talking about the Transjordan Plateau. Um, Golan Heights way up in here, but then we have the Transjordan Plateau with Moab and then Edom, and then we'll talk a little bit about the uh, children of Israel when they came up um, from Egypt coming through that area. Okay, so I think let me just kind of, oh this is another map, you all, I've shown this map, you have this in your handouts. 
as well. It gives those same areas, similar idea, same map, gives you what we're, we're talking about. So let's talk about the Transjordan Plateau, okay? So, uh, um, did we talk about Gadara last week? Can't remember. No, we didn't. That's good. We're, we're good. Okay, Gadara. Um, uh, just can't, we're going to talk about this area. Here's Sea of Galilee right here, Jordan River. We're talking about this area just um, south of there. There is an area of the, the Decapolis. We talked about Decapolis last time. Yep. We did. Okay, I'm in the wrong place. I'm like, I, I review this just a second here. Let me get back to where we were. I don't want to review what I already talked about. Yeah, we're going. Get it? Yeah, we'll get the test. Joe, the test will be later, okay? Okay? Test is later. Okay, here we go. Okay. I thought we had already talked about that. Okay. Here we go. Yes, I thought we'd already. Yeah. We're down south now. Here's the Sea of Galilee. We talked about Moab. Uh, who, is, who is a very uh, famous great-grandmother? There we go. You even knew Ruth. Thank you, Ruth. Um, uh, yeah, you talked about she was a Moabitess, right? And she was from the land of Moab. She ultimately comes in Israel. She comes a Jewish person. She, she follows um, the father of her mother-in-law until she becomes an ultimate answer to the Messiah. In fact, the, Mo, the, the Moab but now we're going to be talking about down this area right in here, okay, which is just southeast of uh, the Sea of Galilee. Uh, give you a, a map here. This is just a map that shows you uh, the... Uh, the, the, um, uh, when the Israelites came out of Egypt. Uh, now this covers 40 years. It shouldn't have covered 40 years. It should have covered about a year, year and a half, and ends up covering 40 years. So they start over here, and let me get my... Start over, we start over here in Egypt. Uh, they crossed the Red Sea. We don't know exactly where they crossed the Red Sea. Um, it wasn't the Reed Sea, you know, so they were able to walk through an ankle deep water. Because what's the problem with that um, liberal solution? Pharaoh and all his army drowned in whatever it was, okay? So it's not, it's, it's, it was a body of water. So they cross through, the, through here, um, and they come down to Mount Sinai. We don't know exactly. Where, there are definite opinions where Mount Sinai is, and I think we probably know. But uh, they go to Mount Sinai where they get the Ten Commandments. Uh, they get the law. Um, all, much of your Pentateuch actually happens um, there. And then they're ready, right? They're a nation. They have a people. They have a constitution, which is the law of God. We'll talk about um, today in uh, uh, Matthew 5, uh, 17 to 20, how Christ will say, I didn't come to not even one jot or one tittle. will be from all of the law. All those things are given. will pass away. He ultimately says, I fulfill, I will fulfill um, that. Uh, the, the smallest letter, uh, jot, which is the yod, the Hebrew, um, the Hebrew uh, smallest letter, and then our tittle, little stroke, like the difference between an N and an H, the little, little thing on top, said, oh, that's not going to pass away. I'm going to fulfill it all. Uh, it, it's amazing. So then they, they get the law, and they're com they come up, and Numbers chapter 13 uh, they're coming up through Kadesh Barnea. Uh, uh, ten, Twelve spies go in for 40 days. Ten say no, two say go. And the children of Israel side with the majority, which is typically not the best thing to do. If you look at biblical history, uh, and uh, they have to turn around for 40 years. They have to wander in the wilderness, and, and God over 40 years is going to kill off two million people, um, except for uh, Joshua and Caleb. Uh, Moses ends up and doesn't go in because of his um, sin when he strikes. Um, the rock. So they, you didn't have, they, they just wander around. They wander around. So we're going to look at some pictures today that will be much of the wandering. We don't know exactly where they wandered around, but they were there. I mean, they were wandering around for 40 years, and, and their basic thing was what? Everyone's got to die. Um, we're going to die. And it was one year for every day that the spies wandered in uh, uh, Israel. Not that it wasn't wrong for the other spies, but it was wrong in their response. And so they wandered around for 40 years. And then they're going to come up, and this is the area we're going to look at right now, okay? We just looked at Moab last week. Remember, we looked at Mount Nebo, where Moses looks into the Promised Land. And now we're going to look at this area south, this area right in here. It's sometimes called the Arabah. You may read that term in some books, um, but it's a, it's a 
very deserty reason. We, we saw the land of Moab, where Ruth was from. It was nice, right? It was green. We'll see even further up where we see two of the tribes, Mass and Gad. They want to stay there because it's a wonderful area. The area down south, no one wants to stay there. It's not a great area um, at all. And so let's just look at some pictures real quick um, of that. Uh, here's the Zered River. You can see here's the Zered River, which they're going to cross over. Um, it talks about that they um, cross over. It drains into the Dead Sea, the very, very um, southeastern corner of the, the Dead Sea. It's the southern corner of Moab, and it's the northern border of Edom. So right here, and this is what it looks like. I mean, would you like to be wandering around stuff like that for 40 years with your family? Um, one of the things it did is what? It made them have to be dependent on God, because God's going to have to provide water. you got to have a pretty big canteen uh, to be able to walk through this kind of area for 40 years. So they have to depend on the Lord. So God's going to say, okay, I'm going to teach you to trust me, because you're going to be in an area and live in an area um, that's going to be very, very difficult, but I will sustain you, other than killing off the previous generation. Um, Deuteronomy 2, 13 and 14. Uh, this is, uh, we've, we've finished up the 40 years, uh, and this is the beginning of the book of Deuteronomy. Uh, it says, now arise, cross over the brook Zered, which, this is, there's the brook Zered right here. This is it. So, they're somewhere in here, they're traveling over the brook Zered, um, the brook Zered. Uh, um, so, the time it took for us to come from Kadesh Barnea, which is when they were supposed to go into the land, until we crossed over the brook Zered was 38 years. Wow. Um, until all the generation of the men of war perished within the camp as the Lord had sworn to them. So this brook Zered is a really a key um, crossing point. Where they're going to cross that because 38 years is because they were, including the time they were at Sinai, it adds up to all 40 years when they're at Sinai and then uh, the, when they're finishing up, when they're um, getting the second law. Deuteronomy basically means second law. They're getting the law all over again because it's been 40 years. God wants them to have a fresh idea um, of the fresh um, word um, from him about the law. So that's the Brooks era. So they're coming through. Now I'm just going to give you a vivid. It's, 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 it's very hilly. So here we have the Gulf of Aqaba. Aqaba. You know when you have the, the, red, the red Sea and you got those two fingers that look like this? This is the tip of that, that finger that's coming up. Um, and we'll, I'll talk a little bit later like the Houthi rebels and all that. Red Sea bottom. I'm going to talk a little about that's very much in this region or area um, of the world. But they're coming, they're going to, Edom is the key thing we're going to look at, at here. And we're not going to look at a lot of history when we go through the Old Testament survey. We'll look at that. They're probably coming up, what we'll talk about, the King's Highway, um, which is a, an area where they could, but you don't have two million people on a small highway, and they're everywhere. I mean, they're, there's a lot of people um, coming up. But they're going to they're go through Edom. And uh, who, who are the Edomites the descendants of? Esau. Yeah, they're descendants of Esau. So, they were descendants of who? Similar to um, the Israelites. Abraham. Abraham. So, they're descendants of Abraham as well. Okay? Um, but they're not Jews because it's, it's the, uh, the two sons of... So, you have Abraham, you have Abraham, and then you have Isaac, his son, and then you have Isaac's two sons, which are Jacob and Esau. Jacob's name will be changed to Israel because all of Jacob's descendants, 100% of them, are Jewish people. They're, the descend they're God's chosen people. The 12 tribes will be Jacob's 12 sons, okay? And so the Edomites were those that were Jacob's twin brother. They had bro they they are in this area of Edom. That they, this is, and it's a very, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's not a real um, lush area where you would necessarily want to, um, to live. So the relations of, uh, between Edom and Israel are not uh, cordial. I guess that's the lack of a better word. They weren't, they weren't real helpful uh, to each other. I mean, we read in 1 Samuel that Saul battled against the Edomites. Uh, David battled against the Edomites. Jehoshaphat battled against the Edomites. Jehoram battled against the Edomites. Um, at one point, David controlled them. David was able to dominate them. But then later on, Jehoram, they broke away and they became independent. And so and they're, they're all in this area right here. I think I have another map of it as well. Oh, well, this is an area that looks like Bozra, which is right in the center of Edom, um, was this area right here. So the Israelites, so this is from the northwest, the Israelites would almost certainly have, you know, traveled through this area as they're heading up. They're heading up to the Zered uh, River, and they're going to head up to uh, where they're going.
They're going to cross the Jordan River right opposite Jericho. They would have gone through uh, this um, area. Uh, Edom often took um, this area often took advantage of G- uh, Jacob. Jerusalem's weak moments when the Israelites were weak, they would take advantage of them. Uh, they're very sharply condemned by the prophets, by Isaiah, by Jeremiah. There's one particular little book that's dedicated completely to the destruction of Edom. What book is that in your Bible? What? Obadiah. Okay, the book of Obadiah is dedicated to that. To because it says they had while the Israelites were running away from another enemy, the Edomites had turned them back over to that enemy. And so God has very strong condemnation for uh, the Edomites. Uh, by, the, um, by the Hellenistic times, or the Roman times, uh, first century B.C., first century um, A.D., there were still Edomites. Who was the most famous New Testament Edomite? Who? King killed all the babies. Herod. Herod Herod was an Edomite. Okay, Herod was an Edomite. So they all came. uh, They all came from this area that we're looking at right here on your map. This is where um, his ancestors, not him, but his ancestors, um, were were from. Ultimately, the Edomites are going to be the descendants of Esau. As far as we know, were going to be destroyed in 70 A.D. when the, uh, the the Jews continued to fight against the Romans and the Romans. Say, we're going to put them down once and for all. And so they do. They base, and 70 AD, and Christ prophesies this, right? He specifically says of the temple, not one stone will be left upon another. And that's what happens. The Romans in, uh, in uh, 70 AD, they completely um, destroyed Jerusalem. Um, they, they burned the temple. Um, they weren't supposed to burn the temple. They didn't want them to burn the temple. But because they held out on the siege so long, the soldiers were so angry that they ended up burning the temple. And all the gold ultimately melts down in the cracks to get the gold. They literally split the stones apart from each other, which completely fulfills Christ's prophecy, right? But back to the main story is that the Edomites, Herod and the Edomites, they actually sided not with the Romans. They sided with the Jews in this rebellion against uh, the Romans. And so in 70 AD, all the Edomites were wiped out. And so they were killed in that whole 70 AD destruction. Uh, there were many Jews that survived, but as far as we know, none of the Edomites survived. But this would have been the area. Um, that they would have been um, from. This is what it would have been looked like. Very rugged, very rugged um, area um, where they're from. Uh, and uh, yeah, and the Israelites are having to um, travel through this area. Um, you may have heard the, uh, well, this comes from Obadiah. Um, Obadiah um, 1 through 3, there's only one chapter in Obadiah, right? So it's just the verses 1 to 3, not chapters 1 to 3. Uh, the vision of Obadiah. Thus says the Lord God concerning Edom. So God has something to say about the Edomites and what they have done. We have heard a report from the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, Yahweh God. And an envoy has been sent among the nations saying, Arise, let us go against her, the Edomites, for battle. Behold, I will make you small among the nations. You are greatly despised. The arrogance of your heart has deceived you. You who live in the clefts of the rock. Uh, the Hebrew word selah, um, it's not the word selah in Psalms. This is the word rock. Um, they lived up in the rock, and this area right here, the map you're looking at, that's what this is called. This particular area is called selah um, after that. Uh, in the loftiness of your dwelling place, who say in your heart, who will bring me down to earth? We're going to look at pictures of Petra in a moment. We're going to see. It was basically impregnable with a, you know, with a, a very small group of soldiers, maybe, you know, 50 to or less, 100 or a little more, you know, hardly any. You could hold off armies for years because it was extremely difficult to get into this area, particularly into the area of Petra. And so they thought, hey, no one's going to conquer us. Um, and God says, no, I will. And they ultimately, they do. Um, get conquered. Um, so let's look at Petra. Um, you may have heard, ever heard of Petra? Um, yeah. Um, this is entering Petra. No, um, Indiana Jones did not discover Petra. You know, um, it actually was filmed on site. It was actually filmed on site. It was filmed in Petra. Um, uh, don't go out and watch the movie because of that. There's a lot of other better pictures that you can see related to that. But let's just look at some pictures of um, Petra. This is inside. Once you go through, this is inside. We're Transjordan. And you can see in the map here, I try to keep this inset here so you 
know where we are. Dead Sea, Araba, down here is uh, Elat, or the tip of the Red Sea, I uh, hear. But here's Petra, um, right in this area here. And the, the Israelites almost certainly, whether or not they went actually into Petra, we don't know, but they were right around this area. Later on, in the time of the Edomites, also people called the Nabataeans were in this area, and they built up um, this area called, this city um, called Petra. Now, some of the things you're going to look at, pictures I'm going to show, were built up later, after 1446, when the Israelites would have come through, um, after the Edomites in about, what, 8900 BC. This is during what's called the Nabataean period, but pre-Roman period, about 3rd or 4th century BC, something like that. The Nabataeans were in this area. But this is inside. This is once you get in. Once you get into the city, there is a, it's a massive, massive valley. I mean, that was accessible really only through this very small area. I know when we were there this last year, when you look down into it, it's just you, people, they didn't find it for, for years. I mean, for years and years and years. It wasn't, this actually wasn't discovered until the 19th century in 1809 A.D. In other words, it was that long for centuries. Now, the, you know, people that lived in that area, is no imagine they knew about it, but they wouldn't tell anyone about it. There was a, a Swiss explorer um, named Johann Burkhardt who actually discovered this. He actually disguised himself as a sheik, you know, looked like an Arab sheik, so that he could, and, and he said, he told them that he wanted to offer sacrifice to Aaron, whatever that meant. He tells them all this stuff, if they would show him, because he'd heard about this you know, this city that was very, very remote. Because at this time, if you know anything about archaeological history, at this time, uh, many people from Europe would go into Egypt, go into all these places, and basically they would take everything. If, if you want to see the greatest treasures of Egypt, you need to go to London, because it's in the British Museum. I mean, they basically would take all this stuff, so the people were careful at this time. But so he, he um, pretends that he's this great sheik and he wants to sacrifice a goat to Aaron. And so he hires a guy because they would have killed him if they had found out what he was really doing. And so he ends up, they take him in and he finds, he finds Petra, um, which was an amazing, it was amazing um, uh, discovery. Um, because if they, would have, if they would have figured out he was an infidel, yeah, they would have certainly killed him. So this is the entrance uh, into Petra. It goes through this um, narrow um, valley, uh, which is dangerous. I think in... Uh, about five years ago, there were a bunch, many um, people killed. There was a lot of even tourists that were in this area because there are flash floods uh, in this area. But this is, is going into it. So you can see, I mean, uh, to go into, I mean, you wouldn't take hardly any people, any soldiers at all to defend um, this city in Petra which is in Edom. We're, we're still right in this particular area. So this is going into it. This is going, this is literally, this is the entrance. When you walk in, this is what you're going to see uh, going in. And this is right there. I mean, that's right there. Um, what you would see is the entrance. And they don't even really still know what this was here, um, this particular um, thing, because it, it doesn't go way in. Well, it goes in. There's a room in there, but it's not. Um, and actually, it was, it used to be beautiful. You can't see it real carefully now, but during the times of the um, Ottomans, the Turks, they literally shot this all up because the statues were exquisite. There's actually a, 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 a painter who, after 1809, after they discovered, he painted this, and it doesn't look like this at all because there are many, many statues that were very beautiful. These all have been shot up as target practice, which is amazing. Um, this is the, which probably when you think of Obadiah, when it says you live in the clefts, you live in the cliffs, that, this is what it probably would have been like. Um, and and this, is, this is in Petra, this is. Um, they were living, seemed to be very, um, here's that saying, that same verse, you know, that uh, the, the, you're, you're right, living in the clefts. You who live in the clefts of the rock, Selah, in the loftiness of your dwelling place. They were pride, prideful. They were saying, no one can get us um, because we um, are, and there's, there's ruins like this in this, this is in this particular area. It's massive. I don't know how big it is. You know, I don't know, 10 square miles. Um, it's mass, five square miles. I don't know, it's massive. There's, there's many, 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 many of these. It's, the interesting thing is even to this day, there's people actually living in some of these. They actually literally live there in them. Now they have their solar um, little thing to power their cell phone, um, which is crazy. You're going up in a situation like this and you're, wow, 
Oh, that's interesting. They got their goats and everything. But uh, someone had a question? Someone's hand? I saw. Yeah. So they had grain storage and yes. talked about the water. Yeah, they, they had grain storage. They actually could raise, they, they, there was enough land. This wasn't like Masada. Relatively speaking, Masada is very small compared to this. This is massive, massive. And they had, so they would have access to water. They had massive cisterns also like Masada. Like, I don't know if you can see it. Um, when you go in, uh, maybe it's right up in here, but going into this, they had, when you walk down, it's probably about a, a three quarters to a mile you're walking through, and all along the way, there is these little channels that are for water. So it's designed, so the whole thing is a water system. So it gets all the water and it brings it into massive cisterns. So they were able to have, I mean, water, plenty of water that they could have survived. And they actually, they actually disguised those channels so that if an attacking army came in, they couldn't see it. They wouldn't realize. So here's where they're getting their water. So they had thought through that whole, because they knew, they knew they could come under siege very um, easily. Um, and so this is very likely uh, similar to where um, the, the Edomites, something like that. These, this, these temples were built later during the time of the Nabataeans, which is about the fourth century um, BC. Um, the Romans actually used them. They were traders. The Romans actually used them. Like when you think of the um, the wise men who came, they didn't come from this area, but some of the things that they had would have come from the south, which would have come from this, through um, this particular area um, from the east. Uh, yeah, this is, yeah, when we were there, I think this is actually when there's people actually living in here, um, which is kind of amazing uh, that they just cut it out of the, cut it out of the rocks. So, any questions? Petra, very fascinating place. Yeah. So, Apostle John, um, he had all of this area to roam around? The, you mean John the Baptist? Yeah. No, John... No, no, no. Um, writing Revelation. John. No, John, is, John was not in this area at all. He was way up, he was up north. He was um, uh, Isle of Patmos, which is a completely different area than this. Yeah, that's New Testament wise. Yeah, Roman Empire. This is kind of very, 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 very backwoods. This is in modern day, what is this country right here? This is modern day Jordan, okay? Petra's in modern day Jordan. Amman, capital city of jo Jordan, up in this area, up in here. But this Petra is in modern day um, Jordan. I'm sorry, but it's very remote. It's very, there's just not a lot of stuff. It's desert. It's desert. You're, to get there, you're driving for miles and miles and miles and miles through absolutely nothing. Uh, it's, yeah, it's not, it's not helpful. It's not encouraging. It's not where a lot of people are going to want to live. Yeah, Sarah. The, no, these, these actual buildings that you, I'm showing you, like the, the big, yeah. you know, that was by the Nabataeans, who were traders. They were not Edomites. They came after the Edomites. There was some connection between them, but the Nabataeans were traders that would control the trade route, the King's Highway that went through this area. It was the Nabataeans and the Romans worked together um, with them for a trading empire. But they weren't Edomites, um, but they were Edomites in this area at the time. But, so that, this would have been built by the Nabataeans. Yeah. Yeah. So. But the Edomites lived up on the cliff? Like. It, I, that picture I was showing you? Yeah. Something like that. Not, they didn't have these great temples and stuff like this, but up on the cliffs, it specifically says in Obadiah, you lived up on the cliffs. They thought they were secure, um, very much so. Yeah, Dan. So I see the Petra gift shop up there. Could you... <laughs> Oh. Where do you purchase it? It's actually, there's, actually, you know what? Actually, Indiana Jones does have a gift shop there. It does. There is, an, in, there is really an Indiana Jones gift shop if you want something from Indiana Jones. I don't know. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we actually, yeah, there's, there's, yeah, they just have little things, trinkets, or whatever. Yeah, Ben. No, 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 no. They just live there. They just live there. They just live there. Um, the government's actually provided them places further outside, but they like living in these caves because um, they're cool. I'm not cool like in neat cool, but cool as in not hot cool. Um, they're hot too, but they're cool. Um, yeah, they just live there because they just, it, they're, they're nomadic. They tend to be nomadic people. They just, yeah, they have goats and like you'd be up, we'd be, we'd hike, we'd hike for, I don't know, a couple hours and there's these people living up in the middle, just way up there. It's just because that's what they, that's what's home to them. That's what's home to them. Yeah. Very interesting area. They're an Arab, Arabic people. They're people. They're not Edomites. So good question. Okay. So, that's the, any other questions related to Petra? Yeah, Joe. Was there any explanation how they built that? 
Well, when it, any explanation how they built that, it's, it's not like you would tend to think of like, you know, Italy or Europe granite. It's a very soft, it's a relatively soft um, stone, so it was relatively easy um, for them to build. It wasn't hard. I mean, it's, it's, it's a softer stone, so it's quite easy for them to, to build in. They could just cut it out. Yeah, it eroded too. That's why the valleys you have the, the going in. Why it's just erodes because it's soft. It's a relatively soft um, stone. Yeah. So the Edomites. The Edomites? Well, yeah. I don't know. It's a good question. I don't know what the Edomites um, were. They weren't followers of the one true God. That's for sure. They came through Abraham, but they weren't followers of the one true God. Um, uh, now, some of them were like Herod. Herod, he actually, Herod was mixed, mixed, okay? He had actually a Jewish grandmother and, a, and also Edomite heritage. So he was both. So he actually, he, Herod actually followed the, Jew, um, the religion of Jew, the Jewish religion. He, he claimed to be a Jew. So they kind of had some mix, but I don't, I, don't, I don't know what the other Edomites had. I don't know what they followed. They weren't followers of the one true God, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, because they weren't a part of when, you know, they come through Sinai, they get the law. They didn't have any of that. They didn't have the law. They didn't have any of that. So they, they are not followers of the land. I would say they're probably closer to the Canaanites who worship false idols and, and things like that. Yeah. Okay. Good. Tell me that question over here. Okay, here's the, uh, the map, and I, I put this in here just to remind you. I already showed this to you. Uh, so here's Edom. Uh, Petra would be right in here. This is basically the area. So they're going to be wandering around here because we're going to look at some pictures um, related to um, this area. Once again, this is the well. This is the this is the Gulf of Suez, but it's also part of the Red Sea. Here's the the Red Sea, which goes way. To, actually, I have another map here. Yeah, there we go. Okay, this is a modern day map, which tells you. Um, yeah. So we're right here in this, uh, you know, Israel's right in this area here, um, and, uh, and uh, Edom is, basically Edom is right where that dot is, and the Gulf of Aqaba is up in here, Suez Canal is over in here, so remember I told you those, those two fingers that go like that? Um, this is the Gulf of Aqaba down in here, and this is the Red Sea, this whole area is called the Red Sea, and just kind of modern day geography. Um, you have Israel, obviously, Jordan, which is basically friendly toward, well, I guess friendly is like a better word, but at peace with Israel, I guess is the word I would use, um, at Israel. Then up in the north, you have Syria, which, yeah, who knows what's going to happen with that. Uh, and then Lebanon, up in here. And then Egypt, which, um, in the 67 war, the, the Jewish people, they took the whole Sinai Peninsula, which is this area right here, but then it was later given back back for peace. Um, so the, here's the line right here for the modern day border of Israel. So the Egypt controls the Sinai Peninsula, but Egypt is on at peace with the nation, modern nation of Israel. Um, and, and Suez Canal is right in here. Uh, Red Sea, um, Egypt, Sudan. Now, here's a country that's, if you're watching the news at all, um, you're very aware of the country of Yemen. Well, here's, here's where it is. Once again, it's a, it's a Muslim country. The Bab al-Mandab Strait, major, major issue. So way down here, I'm just giving you some modern day news so you can see there's some relevance to these things. And the whole Houthi attacks, that's where they're happening, okay? So they're happening right down here. This is where they're, they're happening, at the bottom of the, the Red Sea. Um, the Houthi attacks, which is a Muslim movement. movement. It's Iranian-backed, and ultimately they want to destroy Israel. It's what it comes down to. All this is centered on Israel. It all comes down um, to Israel. So, those, so even what you're seeing in the news today, I mean, it's very, very contemporary. The things that we are looking at, very contemporary. Um, uh, some things don't go away, right? When did this whole conflict start? When did this whole conflict start? Genesis like 15 through 17, 15 through 18. Ishmael, you know, the, the, the attempt that Abraham made to help God fulfill the covenant, uh, the promise that he had made. And then we have Ishmael, and so all the Arab peoples come uh, from that. And so there is conflict then, and there's conflict this day. No one will be able to bring peace until when? Uh, before that, a little bit before Jesus comes back. 
Antichrist. Antichrist will actually bring a temporary peace, sign a peace covenant. If you can see the situation now, somebody come, a world leader that comes along and says, and really is able to make a true peace between Israel and the and these Arab nations, it will be very significant. But then he's going to halfway through uh, the, the tribulation, he'll turn against them, and then ultimately they'll try to destroy Israel, and then Christ uh, will come back, and Christ will make peace for a thousand years in the millennial kingdom. But it all goes back, all of this, what you're seeing, you're living history, right? All the things that you are, you are, uh, we are experiencing right now, it all comes back. It's all biblical. It comes from uh, Genesis uh, 15 to 18. It's part of that whole um, process. But God also says what? God also says that um, in Revelation, there are people from every tribe and tongue and nation, every tribe and tongue and nation that will worship at the feet of the Lamb will come to Christ. So there, there are many, there are many, today there are many Arab Christians. People don't realize there are many Arab um, Christians. And so there, I mean, we want to take the gospel um, to them. They need Christ. That's the issue. They need Christ. Christ. I know Oleg Karatki, our missionary that serves in um, in Israel, he uh, he reaches out to Jewish people. He reaches out to Muslim people. He, they they all need Christ. I mean, he's trying to seek to to take them to Christ. But this is what it all um, comes back to. So here's the the map. I'm just going to show kind of show you some pictures. Of what it would be like, you know? Okay, honey, here's what we're walking through today. I mean, you wake up in the morning. This is what you're walking through, and you're going to walk through that for the next 38, 39, 40 years. And um, that's what you're going to. And that's in this that's in this area way down south here, kind of close to the um, Aqaba, uh, down in this particular area um, here, Wadi Rum. Um, this is also uh, this is also on the the Nabataeans I mentioned up here in Petra. The Nabataeans this was on their trade route, the King's Highway. We'll look at that a little bit um, later. Okay, yeah, uh, you Becky. Know the passage you gave us said that all the men of war right. perished. Does that mean everybody perished, or just the the, the, the Deuteronomy passage that I gave you said that all the men of war, I mean, died. Yes, all the men of war. Because what was the issue? They were saying, we, we are not strong enough. They're giants in the land, so God's going to kill them all. But ultimately, we know the rest of the text. All, all anyone, that, anyone um, that was 21 or older dies uh, in that. Not just the, the men, but they all die. And so it's a, a new, yeah, it's a new generation um, at that point. But this is the areas that they're going to be um, wandering through. Um, yeah, it's very, yeah, it's not, <laughs> it's not real hospitable. It's not an area, you might be an area you like to go visit for a couple hours, but it's not like an area you want to live in for 40 years. This is what you did. Um, but God provided for them, right? God provided them water. God provided provided them food. He provides the manna. He provides the quail. He's going to provide water. What else does it say? It says they, he, they didn't have diseases. They didn't get sick. Um, and you never had to go to the shoe store, right? Because your shoes didn't wear out. Specific, so there are miraculous things. And you had to know that. I guess after a couple years, you'd figure that out. You know, a couple years, you'd figure out that, wow, my shoes aren't wearing out. But there are miraculous things. So God, there are many vivid things that they know that God is providing for them. God is watching over them during this time. But it was not a real um, hospitable area. It was not a real enjoyable area. Um, it was a beautiful area in many ways, but it was, it, was, it was, unless God had been providing for them, there was no way anyone could have lived in this area for 40 years, much less 2 million people, except that God miraculously um, provides um, for them. Okay? John, I'm yeah. Sure, did you go down to Wadi Rum? No, we didn't go this far. Yeah, we didn't go to Wadi Rum. We went down to Aqaba, but we didn't go on this side. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Becky. It really paints a picture of why when they ended up at Jericho, the people were afraid. Because they had to have known two million people. Okay, Becky's question is she said that that's why in Jericho, you're talking about the people of Jericho, why they're afraid. Absolutely, you read in what it says about Rahab, that she says, we have heard, we have heard, of course, two million people are wandering around, and then they wander up through Moab, and then they're just across the Jordan. In Jericho, you could have seen, you could have seen them. It's like, oh, <laughs> the city of Seattle just moved in across the river. Um, that's like what happened, right? 
right? And you also knew, that because she specifically says, she says, we also know, they know about the 40-year-ago Red Sea. They know about that. They know about that miracle. So they know the, the true God is with these people. And so that's why Rahab, when the spies come along, she, she, inter- she intercedes for them. She, does, she hides them. And then she, she says, you know, will you protect me? And because ultimately she also, who else is she? She also is in the line of the Messiah, um, which is amazing. She also was not an Israelite. She was one of the people, a Canaanite from Jericho. And yet because of her faith in God, she becomes a follower of the one true God. She becomes an Israelite. She becomes an ancestor of the Messiah. And so they've heard about this two million people group that's wandering around the, the wilderness. They've heard about the different miracles um, that have happened. And so they're, they're deathly afraid. Um, they know they can't win. They know they can't. They know. It's, uh, uh, and, and Jericho itself is very small. Jericho, I think, is like six acres six acres. Um, I think an acre in our city of Spokane, at least where we are, it's about eight, um, about 16 houses. You know, our, our, our lots are small. And so there's, there's eight. So it's very, very small. Think about two million people um, wandering around five or six acres. I mean, you had to have hundreds, just not thousands of people deep. I mean, it would have been absolutely overwhelming uh, when you see all these people that show up and they're going to conquer your city. And they do. And they do. Okay. Good. Any questions? Yeah, Caleb. The Nabataeans, uh, they are not related to the Edomites. I don't know exactly where they're from, what people they're from. They're a nomadic people. They were known for being traitors, um, particularly around the 4th century. And then they go all the way till the 1st century during the time of the Romans, 1st century B.C. and 1st century A.D. So they have, a, I guess, their... Um, not a ally, but the Romans don't destroy them. And so they, their trading routes are still very functional, going all the way from way far to the east. And so bringing up into Israel, that's why I mentioned the wise men, very likely some of the gold, frankincense, and myrrh, very likely some of those things, like if you went to Petra, they would have gold, they would have, they would have gold, they have frankincense and myrrh there because that's where the Nabataeans would trade. And so I don't know exactly who they are or what their ancestors are. Good question. So, we have gone through all of the regions, okay? I just finished it, okay? Down there, I know it took a while, took a while, but now you have a total, you know, what, thousand <laughs> picture snapshot of uh, what the, the Israel looks like. You've seen the coastal plain, you've seen the lowlands, you've seen the hill country, you've seen the Jordan Rift, and you've seen the, the Trans-Jordan Plateau, and, and that's, and so you can see that the land of Israel is, is, has great variety, great variety north to south, probably the greatest variety is from east to west, right? That's where the greatest area of variety um, is from, and so that's, that's what the land of Israel um, is like. Any questions overall uh, on that? I'm going to go to the, the regions of the uh, Old Testament after this. I don't know what page you are in your book. What page you are in your book? Actually, this is in your book. 29. 29. Yeah, we've been flaming. We just went through three pages in six weeks, okay? So we've been going really fast. Now we're going to pick up. Now I'm going to start looking at the notes. We're going to look at different things, different regions. Yeah. Dan. So, so when you were there, what time of year was it? We were there in May. So it was... It was warm. Beginning of... It wasn't hot, hot. Getting warm. Yeah. But, but, hot, but it's a overall, bit, like, you know, Bible times when it's winter or people are traveling, and so it got cold. It could get cold, but it was, it was more typically like a Southern California climate. It really is. Generally, generally, it's more like a, a Southern California climate. Now, you know, I remember when I was a kid, we would come home yelling, Mom, it's snowing. We'll get frosted. You know, once every four years, it got below freezing in California, in Southern California. But every once in a while on the hills, you could see some snow. So they had snow. They'd have, they have snow in Jerusalem, even to this day, every couple years. Um, they would have in some of the hill areas, every couple years, they'll have, a little, they'll have some snow. I've shown you some pictures. Of, of that, um, but typically it's more like a, it's a Mediterranean climate. Of course, it's Mediterranean. Um, it's uh, it's generally like more of a Southern California or Central California climate. It's typically what it is. It's above the equator, and so it's going to be very similar time frame wise to our seasons. Okay, time frame wise to our seasons. Okay. Good. Okay, let's look at um, Old Testament regions, okay? And I'm, I'm going to go through these pretty quick because there's not, they're not real complicated. It's pretty um, uh, obvious what these are. Okay. Um, okay, here we go. I'm not sure what I'm going to 
Okay, here's a, the region of the Old Testament. I'm, and what I'm talking here now is I'm talking the kingdom, the kingdom. So in about uh, oh, 1100, well, children of Israel come in 1446 B.C. They get out of e Egypt, 1446 B.C. 1406, they start the conquest. 1400 B.C., the number, they get the land. They control the land. And then for 300 years, we have the time of the judges. Um, that's sort of that icky part of your Bible. You know that book, all this icky stuff happens, but the book of Ruth happens in the, in the context of the book of Judges. That happens for 300 years. And then we have the time of the kings. And in, in about 1100 to 1100, we have the first king. Who's the first king of Israel? Saul, because the people ultimately reject Samuel, and they say, we want a king who will lead us into battle. And Samuel warns him. He says, no, this is not a great idea. Now, it was a part of God's sovereign plan. How do you know? Because in the law, in, in Deuteronomy, it talks about a king, that here's the instructions for a king. And yet, this wasn't the right time yet, because they ultimately they reject God, and they have Saul. And Saul is the, the he, he didn't have a heart for God at all. And it's, he, he, Saul reigns for 40 years. The first three kings of Israel, each of them were 40, 40, 40. Saul was 40 years, David was 40 years, and uh, Solomon was for 40 years. So 120 years in the United Kingdom. So together, uh, and I'm just giving you kind of a real quick overview um, of that. But then, in uh, uh, 922 B.C., the kingdom divides. Uh, David was a man after God's own heart. Yes, he had sin. He had great sin. Uh, and yet, he had a heart for God. We see in Psalm 51, he truly repents uh, from his sin. But his son, who was David's son that becomes the king? Solomon. The wisest man who ever lived, but also what? The greatest fool who ever lived. Because God had given him special wisdom. We see the books that he wrote. Um, particularly a um, book of Proverbs, a um, book of wisdom, uh, and yet many if he wrote the book of Ecclesiastes at the end of his life because it shows all the futility of all the things that he pursued other than God. Uh, Ecclesiastes 12 at the very end is the theme of the book. It says what? What the end of all this is what? Fear God. You can pursue all these things. And what's the key word of the book of Ecclesiastes? All these other things are what? Vanity. Vanity. The key is what? Fear God. But, but Solomon sowed the seeds. He sowed the seeds um, for uh, idolatry um, because how did he sow the seeds for idolatry? Foreign wives. Foreign wives, and that's an understatement, right? That's a, that's a big plural, right? Uh, a thousand. Yeah. Uh, he, he took that sin, he took that rebellion into a whole other sphere. And what was the key issue of those foreign wives? It wasn't just the morality issue. What was it? Idolatry. They turned his heart. It even says he did what for these foreign wives? What did he do for them? What? He built high places. He built temples and high places for their gods. I mean, it was horrible what he did. And so what does that do? That sets the stage. That sets the stage for the people to go into idolatry. And that's exactly what happened. And so because of his father, David, because David was a man for God's own heart, David worshiped God. Solomon builds the temple at the beginning, right? He builds the temple, um, the greatest structure that ever has existed. Uh, the temple was smaller than this room. Most people realize the temple is actually smaller than this room, um, and the amount of gold in that uh, structure is absolutely phenomenal. Solomon builds the temple, and yet his heart, he had a half a heart for God. He was like in James 1, it talks about the double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. That's what Solomon was. He was double-minded. He pursued God, but he pursued um, other things um, as well. And so, because of his father David, uh, who was a man for God's own heart, God, he, he did not, the kingdom was not taken away from in his lifetime. It was in his son. His son's name was Rehoboam. And uh, Rehoboam, Solomon dies. Rehoboam becomes the king. And God is sovereignly behind all of this, right? All these stories that you read about in the Bible, God is sovereignly accomplishing his will. But Rehoboam becomes king. And the people say what? The people complain to Rehoboam. What do they say? I mean, it's something that you probably said about April 15th. Taxes are too high, right? The taxes are too high. You're, all these things in your control. Can you just lighten the load and we'll be, we'll be happy citizens? And so what does he do? He goes to the, old, the counselors of his father. He goes to the counselors of his father and say, what should I do? And they say, absolutely, the people are right. Um, you need to lessen your father's taxes, lessen the taxes, and uh, don't be so dominating and controlling, and the kingdom will go well, because there's some wisdom um, in that. But what does is, what is, what is, uh, Rehoboam do? 
He then, he goes, says, well, I don't like that advice. It's no where someone says, well, I'll find someone that says something I like, and then I'll do that. So he goes to his buddies, and he says, what should, what should I do? And they say, oh, no way. You need to just ramp it up. Ramp it up. And so that's what he does. He tells the people, and the people are all gathered. It's three days. They gather, and they, 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 they say, okay, Solomon, what's your answer? I mean, not Solomon. Uh, Rehoboam, what's your answer? And so uh, he tells them, he says, no, you know, he says, I'm going to beat you. I'm going to take yours. I'm going to dominate. I'm going to be this. And they say, we are done with you. So the 10 northern tribes at that point, led by a man named Jeroboam, Jeroboam, Rehoboam, Jeroboam, they're the two um, alternate kings. Jeroboam, not a descendant of Solomon, okay? Jeroboam, he takes the kingdom away from the house of David. And so only Benjamin, the tribe of Benjamin and Judah, Judah, the it's going to be the lineage of Christ. Judah is what the line of the kings have come from. David was from that, from the tribe of Judah. And so Judah and Benjamin uh, stay, um, and they become what's called the southern kingdom. The northern kingdom is the ten other tribes, and they become called Israel. Now, I know it's confusing, okay? So you have to know where you are in your Bible when you read Israel, okay? If you're pre-922 um, B.C., Israel means what? everybody, right? It's everyone. But when you're talking about uh, uh, First Kings, Second Kings, uh, Chronicles, uh, when you read Israel, many times it's talking about the northern kingdom. And the northern t- kingdom was completely consistent, okay? How many evil kings were there in the northern kingdom? All! Oh! All the, all the, why? They weren't supposed to be kings. None of them were from the tribe of Judah. They weren't supposed to be kings. They were all very, very wicked. There were about eight good kings in the southern kingdom. Out of 21 kings, there were about eight good kings in the southern kingdom, the kingdom of um, Judah. So I just give you that a history so you can understand. Here's, here's where we are. So... During that time, post 922, from 922 um, until the exile in uh, 586, um, so for about 400 years, we have what's called the, the, this is Israel overall, land of Israel, okay, land of Israel, but you have the southern kingdom called Judah, and their line goes right up to, just, and I'll show you a map that includes that, right up to that. Um, and then you have the northern kingdom, which is called Israel. Here's the passage I referred to. When all Israel saw that the king, Rehoboam, did not listen to them, the people answered the king, saying, What portion do we have in David? We have no inheritance in the son of Jesse. To your tents, O Israel, look after your own house, David. So Israel departed their tents, but as for the sons of Israel who lived in the cities of Judah, Rehoboam reigned over them. And that would be Judah and Benjamin. And then verse 20 of 1 Kings 12, it came about when all Israel heard that Jeroboam had returned, they sent and called him to the assembly, and they made him king over Israel. Uh, And so here's the divided kingdom. And this is, once again, the kingdom starts shrinking. Why? Because they're, one, they're not following God, and two, they're not united. So the kingdom shrinks. The Philistines shrinks. The Philistines and all their enemies, they're going to push back because they they have a conflict within the country, so they're going to push back. And they make the country much um, much smaller um, than it was. So here's Jeroboam. He, he gets much larger area, um, he, which will become later uh, modern-day Galilee, and not modern-day, uh, first century Galilee and Samaria. His capital, he had actually, they had actually several capitals, but Shechem was the main capital, and Shechem is not a great place, right? There was, some horrible things have happened in Shechem in, uh, during the patriarchs. But the tribe of Judah, which would include Benjamin, has this area right down here called the Southern Kingdom. And that's gonna, that happens in uh, 620, I mean, in, sorry, in 922 uh, B.C. Now, what happens in 922? Uh, Jeroboam knows, what's the problem with having a, a Jewish kingdom in the north? What's the problem? What's the big problem? What? No temple. no temple. Okay. Big problem. Uh, uh, Jeroboam doesn't have Jerusalem. He doesn't have the temple. And so what does he do? He makes what's called high places. He, put, he makes two of them. Two high places. One in the very, very far north and one just over the border of the, of the um, right here. Right in here. So he has two of them. And what else? There is a certain tribe that completely migrates from the northern kingdom to the southern kingdom. Who is that? What? What? 
the Levites, okay? The Levites had no allotment. The Levites were the spiritual, supposed to be the spiritual leaders of uh, the, the, the country. So in 922, when uh, Jeroboam, when he makes all these, uh, when he makes these high places, it says the Levites, but it also says anyone whose heart desired to follow God, they all got up and moved. They moved to the southern kingdom. So there are other people from other tribes, not a lot, all the Levites, and then other people who wanted to follow God, they moved south. So kind of, if you kind of stayed in the northern kingdom, that was usually not a really good sign as far as your spirituality because it, it, was, it was problematic um, for you. Here's another map um, for that, just the, the northern kingdom. Here's the northern kingdom. And their, their kingdom went over in here. What is this area of Moab? This was the other half tribe, right? Um, remember, they, they had that. And so this would be the northern kingdom um, that will... Um, that, and then the southern kingdom in, in that area. You can see right here, Philistia. David had control of this, but Philistia, the Philistines immediately, they're going to push back. And so they lost control of that. They push back. They lose control of that. And here's the, some of the main highways that, that flow through um, there. So Judah had a, a smaller area, and, and there are going to be many battles back and forth, back and forth. Um, we would call them civil wars. So there are going to be many civil wars um, back and forth, and God's going to send many prophets that are going to, during this particular time, uh, from uh, 922 B.C. Um, to um, 720. 720 is when the, the north northern kingdom in 720 uh, the northern kingdom is going to fall to Assyria in 720 the, the Assyrians are going to conquer them and take them to captivity uh, the Assyrians are going to try to conquer Judah but there's a great king named Hezekiah who does what he turns to God it's a great, um, Brent preached through that section in Isaiah 36 to 39 that, that talks about how Hezekiah does what? They send him the letter of Shaka, they send him, the, they say, we're going to, there's all the stuff we're going to do to you and your families, and what does he do? He takes the letter and does what? It says he lays it out before the Lord and says, what should we do? And because of that, because Hezekiah humbles himself before the Lord, the Assyrians don't conquer them. They get, in a sense, a lease on life. It's not until 605, actually it's Babylonian, 605, 597, and 586, the Babylonians then will, will conquer um, the southern kingdom. So those are the, those are the, the main areas of, uh, 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 of the um, Old Testament, okay? Well, next time, we're gonna, I'm going to draw a line, stop there. We're going to look at the New Testament region. Any quick questions, really, the Old Testament region? I'm trying to give you some big pictures, some big hooks, okay? Kind of increase the, the big picture. Remember, we're taking a, a 50,000 thousand um, foot view of the land, but also um, history, so you can understand, okay, what happens here? The history intersects um, with um, the locations, okay? Next time, we will talk about the New Testament region. We'll go through that pretty quick, and then we're going to look at the uh, different um, routes that will go through um, the land, because it's very significant. There's only a couple ways that you can go, even to this day, there's only a couple ways that you can go through the land, and it affects a lot of what happened to them, okay? Let me close our time in prayer. Father, we are so thankful for your word. Um, gives these details. And, and these details are significant because they're true. Um, just as the theology is true, just as the, um, the, the reality of how we can be saved is true, but also all these other things are true and they have meaning, they have significance. Christ, you said that not one jot or tittle would pass away till all is fulfilled. And, and it's true. Even these detail things, they, they have meaning. Help us not to gloss over the details and lose the, the significance, lose the, the full color, the high density that we can see when we look at your word and all the details. Thank you, Christ, in your name. Amen.